We're in Isaiah chapter 43. Um, Tonight, I want to encourage you to move forward in the new thing that God has for you. Okay, no better text, I think, than Isaiah 43 verse 19 to get us started for the new year, looking forward into what God has for us. And so our main text is going to be Isaiah 43. We're going to start in verse 14. And we'll read down to verse 21. And I want you to even start right now just highlighting verse 19, because that's going to be the, the new, um, the, the, the key verse um, for our, our passage tonight. And again, I just want to encourage us tonight to move forward in the new thing that God has for you. And this is such an amazing passage where God is going to speak to his people in Judah. And he's going to say, listen, I've got a new thing for you. And so I don't want you to miss it. And my encouragement, my exhortation for us tonight is the very same thing, that God has something new for you and he doesn't want you to miss it. So start reading with me in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 14. It says, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives the Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Verse 18 and 19, our key verses. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise." God, we just commit our Bible study to you. We love you. I pray now that you would teach us through your word by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Soften our hearts. God, we need you. We're so desperate for you. We're so desperate to hear from you. Lord, teach us. Here we are just saying, Lord, teach us. We're here. Here am I. Teach me now by your word. Do a new thing in our hearts, Lord. Help us not to look Back at the old life, the old ways, the old habits, we want to look forward to what you're going to do in our future, Lord, and we give you all the praise in advance because we trust you. Teach us now through your word. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name, and everybody says amen. You may be seated. Now, when the clock strikes midnight, all right, so this is December 31st, 11.59, the anticipation And when the clock strikes midnight and the calendar year turns, it almost feels like like a weight is off our shoulders, right? Ah, a new year, new me, new beginning, new adventures, right? And we kind of rehearse in our minds. Maybe some of you have a journal and you wrote down kind of New Year's resolutions or new goals and new things you wanted to accomplish. And it was 2023 is the year I will fill in the blank lose weight, put on muscle, pursue my dreams, pursue that girl, be in a relationship, get out of a bad relationship, finish school. And we have these different aspirations for ourselves. And when the new year strikes, kind of ready for a fresh start, take a deep breath, ready to move forward from the previous year year, and move into the new things that we would like to accomplish. Now, why can it always be like this with the Lord? Sometimes, in terms of our walks with the Lord, we somehow feel it's not as easy to have a fresh start and move forward with the Lord. We, cl- we quickly get stuck in old habits, dwelling on the past of painful mistakes, deep regret, And we aren't so easily able to move forward in the new things that God wants to do in our lives. Why is it so difficult to sometimes shake free 
from mistakes and move on from deep regret and sin. I'll tell you why. Because the Bible compares our sin to chains and shackles that keep us in bondage. And thus, sometimes we feel it's difficult to shake our past because we feel bound to it. And this is what the Bible says, that our sin, our regret, our shame, our guilt, it it feels like weighted chains that we're bound to. In John 8, 34, Jesus said, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Paul would say in Romans 6, 6, our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. The psalmist would say in Psalm 107, verses 10 through 11, some sat in darkness, speaking in spiritual terms, some sat in darkness, prisoners, suffering in iron chains because they rebelled against God's commands. And so when it comes to our own sin and our own regrets, and listen, we all, I will be the first to say it, have deep regret, have deep shame, have done things we wish we we would have never done, have not done things we wished we would have done, and sometimes we just sit in that and we feel enslaved to it, And we pray and ask for forgiveness, but we we still feel bound to these chains of our sin. And the Bible rightly characterizes that feeling by saying, listen, you feel like you can't shake your sin? It's because sin is like a weight. It's It's like chains that keep you shackled. You're enslaved to sin when you continue to indulge in it. But I love this passage of Isaiah 43. I want you to really hear my heart tonight, guys. Uh, not, not, not my heart, I take that back. I want you to hear from God's heart. Here in Isaiah 43, the Lord tells his people to forget the old things. And he says, you have to move forward. Don't be stuck in the past for God wants to do a new thing among them. And I'm going to present this passage within its context and let you know what was going on in the days of Judah in roughly 700 BC, but this principle is timeless. I want you to hear me tonight. Guys, God wants to do a new thing in your life. He has something new for you, but don't miss it. It's possible to miss the new thing that God wants to do in your life. How is it possible to miss the new thing that God wants to do when you're continually looking back at the past? So we're gonna unpack this and walk through this passage together. So I want you to look at verse 14 and 15 with me first. It says in verses 14 and 15, we read it just a moment ago, but let's put it in its context and expound upon it just a little bit. It says, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, so this is the Lord speaking through the prophet Isaiah, For your sake, speaking to his people in Judah, for your sake, I will send to Babylon. Or the New Living Translation says, I will send an army against Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives. The Chaldeans, Chaldeans, just another name for Babylonians. The Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. So listen, God here, he's speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He's speaking of future events. Okay, this this event that he's speaking of has not happened yet. He's speaking of future events. And what he's saying is, listen, the Babylonians who will oppress you later down the road, I'm gonna bring them down. I'm gonna destroy them. I'm gonna take care of your oppressors. I'm gonna deal with them. So he's speaking of future events. This is the very interesting thing, is that when Isaiah prophesies this to the people, prophesies, listen, there's gonna be this group this, this, this empire called Babylon, they will oppress you, but I'm going to deal with them. I'm going to destroy the Babylonians. This, this event isn't going to happen for another hundred years in the future. And so when God, through the prophet Isaiah, is prophesying to the people of Judah, he's speaking of a future event, but this event won't occur for another hundred years. So putting this passage in context, Isaiah, he's, he's a prophet of God speaking to the nation of Judah. Its capital was Jerusalem. And Isaiah the prophet, he prophesied roughly around the time of 700 BC. This is 700 years before Jesus was born. 700 years before Christ. 
And Isaiah the prophet is speaking to the Jews in the land of Judah. He says the Babylonians are an empire that's going to rise up. The Babylonians in 700 BC, they, they had not even risen to prominent power. Okay, it was the Assyrians. They were the world dominant uh, empire at the time. So he's speaking of this empire that won't rise up for another hundred years. He says, when this empire rises up, they will take you captive. They will oppress you. Remember Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Daniel and his three friends were a part of this captivity because the Babylonians wouldn't rise to power um, until roughly 600 BC. So Isaiah, 700 BC, speaking of future events in 600 BC, and they would come to pass. So God speaks of this event where they will be oppressed by the Babylonians, and it, it comes to pass. Between 606 to 586 BC, the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar rise to power, come to the land of Judah, take people captive, take them back to Babylon. So God, through the prophet Isaiah, is speaking of this future event, but he says, I'm gonna deal with your oppressors. I'm going to deal with them and bring you back to restoration. Does everybody get this? So God, through the prophet Isaiah, is telling his people of an event that will happen 100 years in advance. So in verse 14, he says, listen, even though I'm gonna use the Babylonians to spank you because you've been living in rebellion, you've been living in idolatry, he says, I'm gonna restore you. I'm gonna bring you back. I'm gonna redeem you. And here's what I love about our Heavenly Father. Guys, don't miss this. Here's what I love about our Heavenly Father. God looks beyond their future punishment because he says, you will be punished for your rebellion. But God looks beyond their future punishment and he highlights how he is going to forgive and redeem them. He says, I'm gonna destroy the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, and I'm gonna bring you back. Now, this is a little confusing because in verse 18 and 19, he says, forget the past, forget the former things. Uh, don't dwell on the past. That's verse 18 and 19. He says, behold, I'm gonna do a new thing. So it's a little confusing because this is what's happening. God is looking into their future to tell them to forget the past. Okay, so to help kind of bring some uh, clarification to this, because this is a very odd thing. God is saying, hey, uh, this is what's gonna happen in the future, but I want you to forget about it. Isn't that weird? Okay, it would be like this. It'd be like if I was having a conversation with my daughter, Ava. She just turned five. And I love my daughter, Ava, to death. I would die for my daughter. She is the most precious thing to me in the world. But she has an attitude. And uh, it's not fun. It's stretching my prayer life. So pray for me that um, I would get over my bitterness with the commander's loss and in my parenting with Ava. Those are the, my two prayer requests for tonight. Um, thank you in advance. So I want, I want to play this out. So if I'm having a conversation with my daughter, Ava, and I were to say, listen, Ava, uh, you've been in rebellion. Uh, you've been in idolatry. Uh, you've been bowing down to your Barbies. And um, I, I cannot let this go on. Um, this, is, this is wrong. Uh, again, this is idolatry. You're uh, in disobedience to me, and so I have to punish you. And um, in, in a few years, not now, but in a few years, when you're older, I'm gonna send you to boarding school, okay? And it's not gonna be fun. They're gonna give you a uniform. They're gonna feed you three square meals a day, and they are going to teach you a lesson because you, you can't continue to live in disobedience. You can't continue to bow down to your Barbies, okay? You need to respect me. I'm the authority in your life, not your Barbies. And so later down the road, again, not now, later, I'm gonna send you to boarding school so that you learn not to be disobedient, but forget about boarding school. I don't want you to dwell on the, the, the fact that I'm sending you to boarding school. I want you to dwell and think towards how I'm going to restore you, because I'm gonna bring you back. I'm gonna bring you back home. And I want you to dwell on the fact that I'm gonna do a new thing. I'm gonna bring you home. I'm gonna restore you. I'm gonna forgive you. Okay, does everybody get this? This is what God is speaking to the land of Judah. He says, you will be punished because you can't continue to live in your rebellion and your idolatry, but I don't want you to dwell on that. I'm gonna do a new thing. I'm gonna bring you back. I'm gonna redeem you, I'm gonna restore you. So this is how God is speaking to the land of Israel. This is what God, God, God does to his people. God looks beyond the rise of Babylon. He looks beyond the fall of Babylon. He looks beyond their punishment 
And he says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to look forward to how I'm going to restore you. Because my heart for you is to do a new thing to restore you, to redeem you, to forgive you. I want you to read with me again verse 18 and 19. Precious verses. He says, do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Circle that in your Bibles, new thing. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? He says, do you not perceive it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You see, God is way ahead of us. God knows our past, sees where we are presently, but he looks forward to our future in him. You mean to tell me that God, who knows my past, the mess of my past, the things I've done, that he doesn't want me to dwell on the past because he's too busy looking forward to the glorious future I have in him? Yeah, this is, this is God's heart. God is, he's way ahead of us. He sees our future. It's us who continually get stuck in dwelling on the past. It's us who just continually look back to the past. God is always eager to forgive. He's eager to forgive you. God is eager to forgive. He's eager to restore. He's eager to make new. It's us who stay entrenched in the past, entrenched in the shame, entrenched in the sin, the guilt, the habit. So I want you to write this down. God, God wants to do a new thing in your life. I want you to write that down because I have a few points on, on how to do a new thing. But I want, you to, I want you to write this down as well. Staying stuck in the past can keep us from the new thing God wants to do. Staying stuck in the past can keep us from the new thing God wants to do. This is the title of our Bible study. You can write that down. And then I also want you to write this down. Staying stuck in the past can keep us from the new thing that God wants to do. And this is so true, and this was true for the people of Judah. And sometimes the past, it doesn't even have to necessarily be bad things. Okay, for the most part, we, we stay stuck on the bad things of our past, the, 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 the sinful things we did in that bad relationship, um, the, the sinful things we've done in private, God knows it, okay? And, and we, we dwell on the past, we stay stuck in the past, but sometimes staying stuck in the past doesn't even mean we dwell on the bad things. Sometimes we're stuck in the past because we just continually look on the good old days, right? It was better back then. That old job, that, that old job was better. I hate this job, you know? This job stinks, I wish you're back, I was back at the old job. Shouldn't have left, I shouldn't have complained. Now look at where I am. The, the, old, the old job was better. That bad relationship was better than being alone because at least I wasn't lonely. So I'd rather be in that bad relationship. I don't know if the person really knew the Lord that I was in a relationship with, but at least I wasn't alone and we dwell on that past. I wish I was just back there because it was better back then. You know, I wish I was still doing that. I wish I was still there. I Wish I was here, you know, and we just continually dwell on the past and maybe the, the past was better in some cases because the future, sometimes we look at our lives now and it's not always better, right? And we just wish we were back then. Man, back in school, man, I, I'm in the real world now. I've got a job. To, man, college was awesome. That was great. And we're, we're just always dwelling on the past. And, and when you do that, when you dwell on the past, maybe it was the good old days, you dwell on the accomplishments, you dwell on the successes, and you're not seeing success now, and so you look back on the success of your former years, or maybe it was the bad things of your past, and you feel just the guilt and shame, and you rehearse those memories. Maybe something was done to you, and you can't forgive, and so you just rehearse the pain. Okay, when we do this, we're all guilty of it to some degree. When we do this, we are susceptible to missing the new thing that God wants to do now in our lives. Don't do that. Especially in this new year, fresh new year. We set out all these goals for ourselves in this new year practically, like losing weight and all that stuff and getting fit and getting healthy or you know, whatever it might be. But spiritually speaking, sometimes we can just hold ourselves back because we think, does God really 
want to do something new in my life. I can't see God moving. I can't see him working. And we're continually just stuck rehearsing the past and all the pain and all the, all the things in our past. We just rehearse it. Can't let go of it. But just as God was telling the people, his people whom he loved, listen, I'm going to punish you because of your sin and rebellion. I'm a just holy God. I can't let your sin go unpunished. But I don't, I don't want you to dwell on that punishment because I'm going to restore you. And I want you to look forward to the new thing I want to do in your life. God wants to do a new thing in your life tonight. And he wants you to look forward to it. He wants you to enjoy it with anticipation and say, here I am, Lord. I'm excited to see what you're going to do in my future. I let go of the things of the past. If Judah stayed stuck in the discouragement of their sin or in the seduction of Babylon... Because listen, when Babylon took the Jews captive and took them back to Babylon, Babylon was beautiful. And when God then released them from their exile 70 years later, many people stayed because Babylon just became comfortable and there was more sin and idolatry. And so if Judah stayed stuck in the discouragement of their sin or in the seduction of Babylon, they would have never experienced the new thing which was their eventual freedom when God would restore his people back to their homes. It's God who's eager to move forward and to do a new work in our lives. It's us who get stuck in the past. Paul would say this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 and 14. This is what he said. This is, this is a key verse for us tonight as well. He said, I press on. Everybody say, press on. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. He says this, brothers and sisters, I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on. Everybody say press on. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. In that same passage, Paul would say, I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor of Christians. This is all his old life. I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I was a murderer. He says, but now all those things I put in the past because God in Christ Jesus has forgiven me and therefore I move forward. I gotta press on. I'm not gonna dwell in the past. I'm going I'm to forget the past and I'm going to move on and move forward in Christ Jesus. I press on. So maybe you've done things you regret. Maybe things have been done to you that you'd like to forget and move past. Three points. Here's how to move forward in the Lord. Number one, call upon the Lord. Number two, confess sin. Number three, ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How to move forward in the Lord. There's a lot of regret I carry. I just want to move forward in the Lord. How can I do that? Something was done to me, and I continue to rehearse the pain. How can I just move forward in the Lord? Listen, number one, call upon the Lord. And this is what he says in verse, four, uh, still in chapter 43, verse 22. I want you to read this with me. So after God tells Judah... I'm going to restore you. I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to do a new thing. He says this, that this is what the people have been doing in verse 23. He says, but you've not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been weary of me, O Israel. You hear God's heart for them? He says, listen, I'm going to do a new thing. He says, but you haven't called upon me. He says, you've been weary of me. And sometimes... We just get tired of the Lord. We get tired of going to church. We get tired of bringing the old redundant prayer request to the Lord. I've prayed to the Lord about that sin time and time again. And I'm, I'm sure that the Lord is tired of hearing about it. So I'm tired of going to the Lord with this. But God here, he says, listen, you haven't called upon me. He says, you've been weary of me. Nobody needs to raise their hand, but who's, who's just, if you're honest with yourself, just tired, just tired of going to the Lord? Okay, that, that, that's, that's, that can be a natural, a natural thing, just to feel tired and exhausted. But what the Lord wants from you, he says, I want you to call on me again. 
and I just want you to be real with me. I want you to just lay bare before me, and I want you to call upon me. So how can you move forward from your past? Just call upon the Lord. Say, Lord, here I am. I want relationship with you again. I just want to commit myself to prayer again. I'm going to call upon you again, because that's what God wanted the people of Judah to do. He says, you're not calling upon me. You're tired of me. Some of you are, are tired of the church because you're tired of hypocritical Christians. Don't put your faith and trust in a person. We can all be hypocrites at times because we don't play Jesus as well as we wish we would. I'm a hypocrite. We're all hypocrites, so welcome to the club. But some of you push God away because you think that Christian let you down, he or she is a hypocrite. Yeah, people will let you down, but God never will. So don't put your trust or faith in a person. Put it in the person Jesus Christ. He'll never disappoint you. He'll never let you down. So he says, I want you to call upon me again and I want you not to be weary of me or tired of me. D.L. Moody, he said this. He said, some people think that God is troubled by our constant coming and asking of him. But the way to trouble God is to never come at all. Some think, God, God, you're, you're tired of me just praying this same prayer over and over again. God doesn't want to hear it. Listen, the way that you trouble God is when you never go to him at all. So go to the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord. Number two, confess sin. Confess sin. This is what he says in chapter 43, verse 25. And speaking to his people, he says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. I'll read that again. Even I am one who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Listen, God desires to blot out and not remember your sins. But it starts when we confess our sin to him, when we repent of our sin. And the promise is that God will remember our sin no more. Well, that's interesting because I thought that God was all-knowing. How could he forget something? When the Bible says that God will not remember your sins, there's another place in the book of Psalms where it says that God will forget your sins as far as the east is from the west when you confess your sin to him. It doesn't mean that God forgets. He knows. He knows all things. But what it means when God says, I'm not going to remember your sins, I'm going to forget your sins, is it means he will no longer continually hold your sins against you. When you confess sin, when you turn from sin, it says, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It means when he sees you, he doesn't see your sin anymore. He sees his perfect son, Jesus Christ, in you. But you have to come to the Lord, you have to confess sin. Because the, uh, the Lord will not forgive that which you have not confessed to him. He already knows it. Just confess it to him. He already knows what you've done. Just confess it to him. And when you confess sin, and you turn from it and say, Lord, here's what I've done. I confess it to you, Lord. I don't want to do it again. Forgive me. The Lord says, I'm not going to remember your sins. I'm going to blot out your transgressions. And listen, this is important too. When you can't forget your past because something was done to you by someone else, you need to forgive them. That's how you move forward. You need to forgive them. And you need to take on the character of God in this way, to choose not to remember that person's sin any longer. Are you telling me I, I'm just supposed to just forgive and forget? Listen, it, I'm not necessarily saying that you will just automatically forget the pain. Okay, sometimes the Lord does a miraculous work and he just washes our memory from the pain. The Lord can do that, I believe that. But sometimes we won't always forget the pain that was done to us. But in the same way, just as God chooses not to remember your sins, meaning he doesn't choose to hold your sins against you anymore, when you think of that past pain or hurt, you have to choose, I'm not going to hold that sin against that person any longer. That event will no longer have weight in my life. I'm not going to consider a value anymore. I'm going to give it to the Lord and allow that event to stop plaguing my future. I'm going to leave it in the past. I'm going to forgive that person. So confess sin to the Lord. You want to move past something? Confess it to the Lord. And the Lord is gracious. And he says, I desire to blot out your transgressions and to remember your sins no more. And the Lord will do that. 
Move forward in Christ in that way. And then finally, number three, ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this bleeds into chapter 44, verse 3. Chapter 44, verse 3, and we'll end it here. He says, For I will pour water on him who is thirsty. This is the Lord's promise to those who will turn from sin. He says, I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. So this was God's promise to their future descendants. He says, there will come a day when I will pour my Holy Spirit upon them. It is so difficult to live life in such a way that honors and pleases the Lord in our own strength. And so here was the promise of God for a future event. You're not gonna have to do life on your own. I'm gonna baptize you with my Holy Spirit so that my very spirit then indwells you so then you have this supernatural strength to now live in obedience, to move beyond the past and to move forward in your future. This would happen in the book of Acts, Acts chapter two. Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead, and then he told his followers, go wait in Jerusalem for the promise that my Father desires to send you. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter two, believers in the upper room, they're there praying, waiting upon the Lord. Boom, the Holy Spirit falls upon believers, baptizing them in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now the promise for all of us who come into faith with Jesus Christ, God says, I'm gonna do that very same thing. I'm gonna baptize you with the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to do this life on your own. And you can't. I can't live for the Lord on my own. Every single day, I need to confess my sin and say, fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. I can't do this. He's gracious and compassionate. And he desires to baptize you with his Holy Spirit. And you need to do that. And, and, And some of you, Maybe you're here and you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin. You believe that he rose again. You've invited him into your life. You're saved. Welcome to the family of God. But you still feel powerless to overcome sin and temptation in your life. Ask to be baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I just want to do that together tonight. Listen, God desires to not leave us as we are in our past mistakes and regrets and sin, but he desires to do a new work in our hearts. He desires that we live by the power of his spirit. And so let's just take the next two minutes. If you've been dealing with your past in an unhealthy way, you can't forget your past. Maybe 2022 was rough. I don't know how 22 affected you in different ways. If you just seem to wrestle with getting over the regret and the sin and the shame, I want you tonight to just call on the name of the Lord. Say, Jesus, I need your help. Confess your sin. Say, Lord, you've already known what I've done or you already know what was done to me. Lord, I confess my sin to you. I confess what I've done to you. If something was done to you, say, Lord, help me to forgive that other person just as you have forgiven me. So just get right with the Lord. Just confess sin. You don't need to tell me. I don't need to know. You can go directly to God the Father through Jesus Christ. He opened that door of access through his death on the cross. So just confess your sin and ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit and baptize me in your power so that I can live in obedience to you so that I can drop my past and forget it and move forward in the new future you have for me. God wants to do something new tonight in your heart because he loves you. God has a glorious plan and future for you. Some of you are called to ministry full time. He will guide and direct your steps into that glorious future in his timing. Some of you he's calling into the secular workplace to be a light to a dark environment. And he's gonna call you to that new future tonight. Open your heart to him. Some of you, he just wants to take on a new adventure. Just been stuck in the past, just been thinking on the good old days. He says, listen, the good old days, that was great, but I have something new for you and I don't want you to miss it. I've got new plans, new adventures for you, but it starts with calling on the name of the Lord, confessing sin and asking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because you and I, we can't do this on our our own. We can't fulfill the calling that God has on our lives 
all on our own, in our own wisdom, in our own strength. It's all by the power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. When we just continually just stay humble before him, confess sin to him, just continually getting right before him, getting right with him. So let's do that now. I'm going to stop talking. You're like, Austin, shut up. I want to do that now. Then do it. Do it now. Confess sin wherever there's sin in your heart and your life. Call upon the name of the Lord. Ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we just want to thank you in advance for the new work that you're going to do in our lives. Even though we might not be able to see it in the natural realm, we trust that you're working behind the scenes in the supernatural realm. Now give us clarity, Lord. Help us open up our eyes to see what you're doing in our lives. Pray that you would forgive us of sin that you would help us to move forward into the future that you have for us, to not dwell on the past, to not look back to the shame, the regret. But you say when we confess our sin that you are faithful to forgive us and now you want us to press on and move forward. Lord, help us to do that now in the name of Jesus. Pray that we would call upon you, that we would confess our sin, that we would ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit that we might move forward in our new future with you. Lord, baptize this room with your Holy Spirit. Come upon us in power, Lord, that we might live a life of obedience and purity before you. Do a new work in our lives and in our hearts, Lord. I'm thinking of Psalm 25. It says, Show us your ways, O Lord. Teach us your paths. Guide us in your truth and teach us. For you are the God of our salvation. Our hope rests in you all the day long. Remember not the sins of our youth or our rebellious ways, but according to your love, remember us. For you are good, O Lord. That's my prayer for us tonight, Lord. Remember not the former things. Remember not the sins of our past. But according to your love, remember us. For you are good, O Lord. Now help us to move forward in the glorious new future that you have for each and every single one of us. For those who lack joy and purpose and hope, may you fill them with joy and hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, Lord, 
please be faithful to your word. And again, we thank you in advance for the wonderful new things that lie ahead for us. Help us to continue just to state, to, to take just one step of, obe of obedience each and every single day. And we trust, Lord, that you will guide and direct our steps toward the new thing that you have for us. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you are eager to restore us, to redeem us, to forgive us. It is us who stay stuck in the past. You're eager to redeem and restore us. So we humble ourselves before you now. Lord, we ask, restore us to yourself, forgive us of sin, and now lead us to the new glorious future you have for us in Christ. We press on, we move forward. Tonight's the night, Lord, where we move forward. Just whisper that to him. I move forward tonight in you. Say that to him. I move forward tonight in you. We love you, God, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen.